There we go. Here we go on a wonderful Friday afternoon with the Harper Fest with Marsha and Yo Reno. And we are in a very special room that I actually like to come and visit <laughs> because we are here at the Gonstead Chiropractic Office and my chiropractor, and I call him my chiropractor, <laughs> he could be yours too, believe you me. Once you, then we'll have to battle as to who's who. But Eric Davenport is the chiropractor mm -hmm. here in Indio, California. Indio, California. And I'm always like, is this La Quinta? Is this La Quinta? Is this Palm Desert? Is this Indio? And we're in Indio, and he lives, at, the office is rather close to where I live, so it's very convenient for me. But I tell you what, you drive a little ways to have Eric adjusting you and addressing issues that, that you just cannot believe how much better you can feel that you never thought you actually had maybe just a little <laughs> and another little and it's Good like sound effects. and my oh, friend so Lisa sad. Hammert who has uh -huh. come to you quite you know she's come quite a while yeah. and she is not only a student but a friend of mine and she recommended you highly and of course I was thinking oh yeah well you know I've I've been to chiropractors I I you know and so I made an appointment <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm in the special room that <laughs> I love to visit. So, Eric, because after I first met up with you mm -hmm. and and you make me stand up. Uh, oh, by the way, everybody, uh, <laughs> stand up, okay? Chest up, head, neck, boot, shoulders, shoulder blades, abdominal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Now we can go on. But Eric it just has such a special way of addressing your physical issues and I know that we all can be like intimidated and we can be oh no I don't like that and oh I don't want no don't crack you know I have never ever not wanted to stay longer than <laughs> I was allowed at, at his hands and so after I met you mm -hmm. and had the pleasure and privilege of now calling you my chiropractor I discovered numerous things that were so fascinating about you like you do work with autism mm -hmm. and is that with children and adults it's pretty much with anybody who has any neurological condition uh, dysfunction whatever you want to call it for the most part it's about communication we all have a supercomputer and that's why I love my little pictures right here behind me my posters because we all have a supercomputer sitting between our ears and it communicates with every cell in our body through our nervous system. And so the funny little joke I like to tell is just like me and my wife in our relationship, when communication is good, life is fantastic. <sighs> and 98% of the time it's like that. But the other 2% of the time when I put this in my mouth, <laughs> Sometimes that communication breaks and it's not as good. <laughs> it's good that you realize that. 100%. <laughs> and once I finally apologize, everything communicates just fine again. But our bodies are, can, can become disconnected in that same way as a relationship as well. And so that's basically what I am trained to do is find out, for the most part, in the fuse box of the house or your spine, where that communication has just undone itself. And then when we find it, with light adjustments, depending on where we find it, we eventually re-stimulate that communication between the brain and the body and allow the healing to occur. Mm -hmm. I don't do the healing. Your body does the healing. I guide it to start talking again so that it can repair that communication and relationship. Kind of like opening up the highway. 110%, yeah. And so, you know, when people talk about different meridians or, you know, the different uh, chakras and things like that, there's other techniques with um, frequencies like the bowls that they'll put on, the resonance bowls. And the similar types of things are happening. They're trying to reconnect communication in the body through different frequencies. Um, and the similar here, we're trying to elicit a response in that nervous system to regain that communication. Totally makes sense. Well, he, he makes sense. That's why. Because most of us think of chiropractors 
or ch how do you say it? chiropractic is there a like chiropractic well, chiropractic, chiropractic yeah. is all about cracking your bones <laughs> and I, you know there's some of that too but not to the degree that that's the the thing that is going to actually take care of putting this relationship with your body and your mind and all of that. And of course, I'm very fascinated with it all because of the work that I do with the fitness and the dance and everything that I always feel like I may get arrested for practicing <laughs> medicine without a license. So the more I know, the more I can help my students. Uh, no, I'm never going to like crack your spine <laughs> or, or jerk your neck. No, no, no. But I can direct you to who can. And that this, I think he is just such a specialist. And so I know that between like what Lisa has, I've, mm -hmm. I've watched her. She, she appeared just troubled because of a couple of issues in her body that this man found and helped her get rid of. And, and I mean, I watch her in class mm -hmm. and she just moves now beautifully. And I better. know that I move more, more, if not just easily, I move more with confidence mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. place in mm -hmm. my leg mm -hmm. that I should have had him look at, it, he did. So I know that his eyes have, have tell, taken care of my knee. Doesn't mean it's going to stay away forever. No. Some things do, other things return. I have a question. Yes. Just speaking along those lines, how often does a client or a patient come in with this nagging pain that they've had for two, three, four, five years, and you go, well, and then through your magic, basically. <laughs> yes, it is. That's it. They realize, why did I wait so long? Well, that's just the human condition, even myself. I We all have enough experience in our lives where something goes wrong but a couple days later we wake up and it feels better and so I think a lot of us sometimes think oh it's just gonna get better oh it's just gonna get better sometimes schedules get really really busy and the next thing you know it's been three months I actually had a gentleman come in today who was complaining about you know mid back and rib pain for about three months and I said well what took you so long and he's like gotta feed my family doc it's my first day I can take off wow. and so sometimes those are the reasons why um, so for the most part, once they get here, though, it's all about thank you for being here. I'm glad you're here. Now, what can we do from this point to improve where you're at? You know, the biggest thing that I used to do for myself was beat myself up for what happened back here. And then somebody told me a wonderful thing several years ago that if God wanted me to focus on my past, he had to put these things in the back of my head. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so from there, I try to let patients know, you know, hey, yeah, you should have been here 10 years ago, but guess what? You're here now, and your life is going to be better for it moving forward, so let's focus on that. Good deal. Yeah. That, there's like no guilt. There shouldn't be any guilt whatsoever. I mean, we all stumble. We've all messed up. We've all had to apologize. So give yourself a break. Let's move forward and actually focus on what we need to focus on so that we can get you to your highest resonance for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, is, I, I know it's under the name of Gonstead. Gonstead, yep. And that's a certain style or set and technique that was developed by Dr. Gonstead? 110%. Dr. Clarence Gonstead uh, was uh, a good old boy for the most part. He grew up in Wisconsin, a very brilliant man. He was a, uh, worked in mechanics and mechanical engineering. Oh. Um, and then he got a really bad uh, bout of rheumatoid arthritis for a couple of years. And back then, medicine in the 19-teens didn't have anything. Right. And so after some time, somebody said, hey, you know, you should go visit this chiropractor, you know, a couple hours away here and see if he could help you. And Dr. Olson did. And so when Gonstead's arthritis kind of finally calmed down, he just couldn't use his hands the same way he used to anymore in mechanics. So Dr. Olson said, you know, why don't you try chiropractic? So he went to chiropractic school. And when he started doing the live dissection of the human body, he started seeing these mechanical principles that nobody had really seen up to that point, or at least had honed in on. Um, he's actually known uh, in Gray's Anatomy as the only chiropractor who's referenced. He proved that the sacroiliac joints in the pelvis had motion. Uh, this was in the 1950s. Up until that point, the medical field believed that the pelvis was a solid structure that had no movement to it. Wow. Um, so again, he was a very brilliant, brilliant man. And so for me, when I got to chiropractic school, the science behind this method 
is what really just attracted me. I understood it. Uh, with my learning disability, there's a lot of things like numbers and things that just go way over my head. But mechanics, angles, um, those science type things really, really resonate with me. Um, so when I got to chiropractic school, I asked the doc, I said, hey, I don't really want to do this thing. He's like, oh, you got to go to this Gonstead thing over here. And when I really started to learn about it, I felt this is everything I've been looking for and it makes complete sense to me. Wow. Yeah. Like what I tell people, you know, the hinge on the door. An anatomist is the one that actually invented that after the elbow. We are very mechanical entities. So for the most part, when our mechanics become unmechanical or dysfunction, you need a tune-up. You need, just like an automobile, just like, you know, it's any other mechanical entity. We need to tune that up to get it functioning normally again. Well, I used to lay carpet for a living for like 35 years. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I thank God that I did go to a couple of chiropractors and awesome. stress yeah. and did martial arts. So many of my friends that laid way too long, I mean, they're crooked, yes. they're slumped over. Yes. It's yeah. just, but if you don't take care of it. With all the activities I did a lot of, as a kid, uh, all the dumb stuff, you know, <laughs> jumping your bike off the weird things and everything, you know, and trying to keep up with the older kids. You know, I played football through college. Um, I have crashed a couple dirt bikes. Um, you know, I've, I've physically damaged myself. Sure. Um, so for me, not only getting adjusted, but, you know, the other things that come with it, maintaining strength, keeping my weight at a certain, you know, place. And so that's one of the things... Uh, that I wanted to circle back around to your question just a few minutes ago about you know guilt and stuff that sometimes becomes my hardest thing in practice with people right. is the onus that they need to do at home if the body wants to heal and you're putting a milkshake a day into it <laughs> Uh, you sit at home with a camera or no? <laughs> well, no but, but, but you see where we're going. You know, right. if, if we're not giving the body what it needs to optimally heal itself, it's either going to take more time or some in some instances it's not. And so that sometimes becomes a difficult point when the balance of care sometimes isn't there. And as much as I'd love to go and cook people dinners and things like that, <laughs> You know, but see where we're going, and so that right. sometimes, you know, is, is 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 part of what I do, and that's where I take the word doctor very serious. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I'm not a medical doctor, but I still have that doctor title, and that doctor title means teacher, and that's really what I try to help people with is understand the complete picture of who are you, and what does it take to maintain this beautiful temple that we all have here, and. Sometimes the convenience of life is difficult to let go. Yeah, we get too comfortable. 100%. <laughs> and so sometimes my job is taking a cattle prod to a degree and <laughs> trying to prod people along. But that's what's wonderful about folks like her, though, is doing the same thing and providing another balance to something that I do where now we're increasing flexibility through things that you do, increasing strength, increasing ranges of motion and things like that and that's the nice harmonious balance that basically we all need and that's what i love about after she came home from the first time the connection that you two had because her whole world has been dance and fitness sure. and then you enhanced it because she was just like well she, every time she knows she's coming to you she's on cloud nine i got you, I got you. yeah yeah well, i'm not jealous do, i'm not jealous am i blessed yes i am and thank yeah. you god for for bringing Eric Davenport into, well, and Reno Varela too, in, well, into yeah, my I, life. It's okay. And those of you who are watching, you that you know me well, many of you know me well enough to know that I will practice what he preaches because I, I, I just have found a man who, he, he doesn't just crack your bones, like I said earlier. He makes your improves the quality of your life mm -hmm. improves the quality of your life because you're more confident you're more healthy you're more uh, just a number of things and I wish that I knew that some of you who are watching could come to Eric and I know you're way far away and maybe you should check to see if well, the, anybody's told us we haven't been not heard. yet not yet do you think we're, we're being heard oh no one's Sometimes on right now the Wi-Fi 
shuts off the sound. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. good. Okay, we're yeah. good. So then we'll check. And people are, are tuning in mm -hmm. to us now. Sure. So, and, uh, well, I, I, there's just a number of things I want to ask him, but Go I, ahead. well, okay, so... No, I didn't model for the, this picture up here. No, no, no. He, he wouldn't pay me enough. So yeah. I said, no, no, no. You have to do somebody else. But if you have these, like he does, he can point He can point out. And you can, it's like it's not a foreign picture to you because you feel, you know. I, I was telling Reno, he can just go like this to my back. And it, it's like, there's a, in it. So you, you have been, what I feel blessed in and the, that the world is blessed to have you because you love what you do and you do it so beautifully well. And I can appreciate that because in many ways I can't see the body like you can, but almost, almost, <laughs> almost. not quite. And he's going to show you on my spine just what he does. How's that? We can do it. If you're ready, yeah, we have to definitely get it. Yeah. Okay, Whatever. do I just lay down? Yeah, we'll just lay down. Let okay. me just do this, though, make sure oh, my hand is locked so it doesn't move. We'll go face down. Okay, and he's going to, okay. All right, yeah. so if your gal wants to come in, she can. Oh, she's got her little baby with her. Oh, good, okay. Don't mess up my makeup. No, 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 we're just going to take a little, <laughs> little pull just to even you out. five we've been working on. Yep, and I knew it. I'll yep. have you get that breath in for me all the way out. And then we'll push through. Okay, I'll drop that shoulder. Oh, there, go. there it was. I felt Clean it. Clean it up just a little bit more. Tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. There we are. And then a little lift of that spine. There we go, kiddo. Awesome. <laughs> Let's bring you up. I got you. Oh, see? And I, this morning, I knew when I was like doing my whatever it is that I do in the mornings, I hang from the doorway because doorways don't lie. You can't slouch and hang from a doorway. I, mm -hmm. And most of us can't hang from a doorway, mm -hmm. anyway, but we reach. Yeah. I lean through doorways. Say that again? I lean through doorways. Ooh, there's a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, somebody sh show it. Can or, or, right? Make sure he was on camera. Was he? Yep, he was. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Very simple. Just find a doorway. Oh, uh, are we having the best time? <laughs> I mean, Open like up the arms, I all huh? One foot uh, into the door. Look here. And just slowly lean in until you feel a nice stretch through the chest and the muscles of your uh, upper body, and then slowly start to look up to the ceiling until you feel a little bit of a stretch in between the shoulder blades. Hold for 10, 15, 20 seconds, and then release, and go about your day, maybe a couple times a day. If you do do a doorway stretch, though, make sure nobody's behind you. They might get angry if they're trying to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, look around. I mean, you yes, Reno, just kind of took it, take it around and, and show. It's just a room that I love to visit, and, and I come here, and right now, you saw in action my a little it seems like maybe a little adjustment but no it wasn't it was a grandioso move for my body because i feel lifted i feel lifted and of course that's what i talk about a thousand times a day mm -hmm. you know and sometimes i end up feeling like the shoemaker's kid mm -hmm. and i know you must too yeah we we are always fixing somebody you know well yeah. but i'm it's, good to myself well, no, and I think we all, a lot of us are very good to ourselves. I think it's just life that unfortunately gets a little bit, yeah, repetitive. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, you know, we're all kind of developed <laughs> in this position here. Yes. And our body has a natural reaction when we're in pain, when we're in dysfunction, to go this way. So that's why you see so I never, many... I never thought of that. Oh, boom, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. The, end, the, the front muscles actually, as I try to tell like my young athletes, these muscles here, I call them the glory muscles. Because if you work on them, like this gentleman here, they look good. But functionally, what do they do if they're too strong? Yes. Pull you completely this way. And I always say, you have eyes right here. Yeah. And so you have, if you want to see, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, Reno, yeah, go there stretch. Go. Oh, wait, oh, no, you can't see in the camera now. How did yeah. you, how, if you were in the doorway right now, what would you do? You hold the doorway and you, mm -hmm. it's almost like doing a vertical push up a little bit. To a degree, yeah. 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 But just allowing yourself to rest in there and breathe through it. Um, most so people opens the cavities. Hundred percent. Yes. Um, I utilize this ball Get here. Out of the way. No, you're not in the way. I'm not in the way. Get this. Place. Everybody, in my opinion, should have one of these at home. Ah. I do, but it needs to be blown I up. I got you. But to lie <laughs> on it. <gasps> Look in at this that. position here. Really. Well, we've built a world where what do we do? We're on either computers, phones, TVs, even when we drive. You know, I jokingly tell people we even put a TV screen in our cars so that we don't have to do this anymore when we back up. Yeah. So we just, we have a world that does this to us. And when we do this, as I tell people, if you take your hand and put it just above your belly button and around your collarbones, this is your lung field. The more we slouch, yeah. the less air we take in. See, See another thing. You always make so, me feel good, Eric, because I that I say these things. Yeah. So to lay on the ball and open everything up opens up the not only the posture but opens up our airways. Um, I've done CPR every year because it's required for my sports medicine um, certification. And the first thing they tell you to do once you've assessed the scene, uh, making sure it's safe, is go to the person to open their airways. What do you do? You lift the chin. So we're going to put you in a passive extension stretch, opening the chin, allowing for just good oxygenation. And I tell people to do it before bed a lot of times because that extra oxygen, it, it actually relaxes the body and really prepares that par parasympathetic to really slow things down and get you to sleep. Does it matter where the ball is on your 100% back? it does. Okay. I tell most of my folks to start out with the pressure being pretty good right between the shoulder blades. Okay. So what you want it to do is kind of throw that chest mm -hmm. out almost. Once the flexibility gets there, oh yeah, you can roll it up and down your body and, and really gain the flexibility. Um, if you'd like, I can kind of show, as I show a lot of my patients sure. real quick here. Oh, do it. Um, can, can you see? Yeah. Okay. You can do it. If you'd like to do it, please. I'd love to show you how to do oh, it. Down. Yeah, have, have a sit down. You. Yeah. <laughs> here we go, folks. <laughs> So keep a wide base so you have a tripod. Now, start, slowly start to walk forward and the ball's gonna slip until you can lay on it. I've got you, I've got you. Now keep going forward, let the head fall right there. Now keep that tripod base. And the biggest thing here is making sure that the head is attached to the ball. Ah. A lot of times people will wanna get it to their low back and they'll start to roll. And then all of a sudden that neck tightness, that head will lift up off of the ball and they can't get it back and they end up with the neck strain. So what I tell people is keep the ball central more between the shoulder blades for the first week or two. And then as you feel that increased flexibility, then you should be able to roll back a little bit more and let the head, and let the head still attach to that ball. Mm -hmm. So that now we get more of that stretch. Oh, I just cracked my back. Wonderful. And that's the thing. <laughs> we released, though, I started to release and stretch out a tight muscle that then allowed the body to self-correct, which is not a bad thing. Wow. I, th I think every office should have this in it. Yeah. <laughs> just to, to break up the monotony of... Come on in. Well, see, break I... Break up the monotony see, of we being gave, on we, the we, computer. See, we, we gave, we, we gave uh, our friends and family and, and our new guests today an office visit with Eric <laughs> Davenport. So in, in some ways, those of you from, you know, Barnesville, Ohio and places like that, why don't you check and see if there's anybody? Mm, that's showing, but I think because we came on it too. Oh, we, oh okay, right. They so will there, be. there'll be, there will get, yeah, because there's playbacks. You yeah, can play of course. Back. And so anyway, well, I tell you what. For the most part, those balls are very I, inexpensive for most people and it's a great tool to use and to have at your house. Oh, so well, I'm gonna go home and you can blow up the ball. Uh oh, oh! <laughs> it actually is meant to do that. Just was if it you, ready for if, it right now? If you threw your back out, I know a great chiropractor who can put you back in place. Love it, Eric. Is there any? Well, first of all, I'll ask you. I have a there, question yes. on on hernias, like uh -huh. the umbilical cord hernia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How severe are those, or how common are those, and if? somebody detects it, when should they, in your opinion, should they maybe see a, a medical doctor? 
I think when it becomes uh, dysfunctional enough, painful enough, where it's really nagging and bothering you, at least in my in my practice, with folks who have had to go through like an inguinal mess type of a surgery, they've okay. done pretty well with it. Um, but there's certain precautions you would definitely want to talk to the surgeon about. You know, if you end up going that route, um, a lot of times strengthening the glutes for some people losing some weight takes the pressure off of it and can ease and relieve a lot of it. Uh, but for the most part, go talk to the doc when it's just at that point where it's so naggy and painful that you just need something done. Um, but as I try to tell people, if you can get by on it, then do the best that you can. Um, I take care of surgeons. And particularly an orthopedic surgeon a few years ago I was taking care of, um, I asked him, Doc, why do you come see me? <laughs> and he said, so I don't end up on my own table one day. Wow. wow. And that spoke volumes. Um, but, you know, a lot of doctors who now work with, like, the United States Olympic teams, and I say that with the Olympics coming up, are chiropractors. Mm -hmm. And they actually, when they started implementing chiropractic as a part of the United States Olympic medical team, gold medals started shooting up for us. Nice. Mm -hmm. Every NFL team, every hockey, just about every major league team, uh, all NBA teams, all have somebody that's orthopedically and sports trained chiropractor a part of their teams to take care of those multi-million dollar athletes. It makes sense because it's usually the athletes that go after more of the alternative rather than going to go see a doctor. They're, but they're looking for that because as I tell a lot of people, specifically in this season right now of life, if you go medical, you got one of two routes. They're going to give you some medication or they're going to try to open you up some way. Yep. And those are really the two routes, and a lot of people, that's not really what they need. Right. A lot of people come in here because they've been to a few other doctors with nothing but prescriptions, and it's not really helping. Um, I actually started out in physical therapy and then hurt my back and chose chiropractic over surgery, and that's how I ended up going in the chiropractic route. But understand physical therapy, worked in it for a couple, three years, know some really great physical therapists that I've been able to observe here in the Valley, and I truly believe that if we could literally break down this wall that medicine has put up between us, yes. making us comp competitors, which we're not, we'd solve 95% of what's wrong with people. Mm -hmm. Because we're taking care of neuromusculoskeletal. And that's what correlates the majority of function, like I said, as these wonderful pictures show. It's about communication. Once we write the communication, then what can we do to strengthen the body around it to continue to maintain it and build it? Yes. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. I'm a big fan of it. You know, chiropractics and doctors, you know, sometimes they call it a practice. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, do. they do. They <laughs> do. And, and I think the reason why for me, I will always call it a practice, is I'm always trying to figure out how to give the next better adjustment. There's a mentor of mine. Uh, his, na his name is Bill Dressler. He's in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and uh, literally that man gives me an adjustment and I don't feel it. I don't feel his hand move on me, but yet my bone just crushes and moves. <laughs> and that's what I strive for. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. He's been doing it for decades and decades and he's getting probably pretty close to retirement yeah. um, but he same thing he still at this point in his life still tries to improve his adjustments and so in my that's why I call it a practice because I'm always trying to refine that that art that I consider of the adjustment how can I create the same you know result that I want but make it a little bit more gentle make somebody a little bit more comfortable you know, I love it when somebody says, Doc, that felt great. Because, okay, great, that means my technique was good and I got it right where it needed to be. Yeah. Your body didn't fight with it and it was exactly where we needed to be. Rather than making the adjustment but having maybe to power through a spasm muscle a little bit and unfortunately causing a little soreness. It happens. Yeah, it's interesting because it's kind of similar to what Marsha does and even what I do in real estate. But like uh -huh. what Marsha does, people start doing things they don't realize they have the capability to do it. And then like in real estate, if you do make the process smooth enough, they don't realize the difficulties because you took them. 
Correct. You know, you took yeah. them in. And then yeah. what you do, people don't realize that they're being fixed until all of a sudden they're driving home and they'll, that pain went away. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that, one of my greatest compliments is when patients come in and say, I don't want my neck adjusted. And great, we don't have to adjust the neck. And we start working with them, they see improvements, but all of a sudden they'll come back a couple of weeks later and say, you know, everything's feeling better, but I still got this headache. Okay, well, let's talk about that anatomy and why we're going to need to adjust this neck. Well, doc, I'm afraid. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> and we do, and I get it. It's, it, it is a, you know, I, as I jokingly say, which it's really true, I grew up with a dad who watched Charles Bronson, Steven Seagal, and all those guys, Chuck Norris as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And in every movie I saw, what did they do? <laughs> break somebody's <laughs> neck. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so those are definitely concerns that people have. But the neat part for me is when I gain the trust of somebody to allow me to actually give them that needed adjustment, and then they look at me and say, oh, doc, that wasn't anything. That's where that refinement, that practice comes in right. to now have that person to have the confidence <laughs> to allow me to do what's needed for their benefit. Yeah. Yeah. But also got to let them, I can lead them to water, but they're the ones that ultimately have to decide to drink. That's true. Man. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just the way life is with, you know, some people will, some people won't. That's it. It's just, it's timing. That's but it. now you understand why when I come to this room, I don't really want, I want to stay longer and longer <laughs> because you keep thinking, whatever it is, <laughs> it's him. It's it, it, it just you feel so much better and I love his approach. I love the way he thinks. I know that he always has my best interest and in physicality at, at heart. And as a result, I wanted to share him with those of you who didn't have anyone to recommend Eric Davenport to you right here in Indio. And so as you know, uh, let's let's um, we're we in the ad. We have all the info, correct? Yep, yep. We have all the info on the ad with the number, and let's we'll give up give the address. Wait. Oh, it's uh, eight zero one five zero Highway one eleven. We're in Suite five here in Indio, California nine two two zero one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the phone number you pro do you know? I do. Area code seven six zero eight six three zero four three five. That's because he has some fabulous gals that I have had the privilege and of. And they've beat it into my head now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as you well know, Reno will put out all this information once again tomorrow or sometime before the weekend is over. And you will see it. Take advantage of it. He doesn't need the business. Let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I, I would like to be a little selfish and just say, no, don't call him because I want to always... But I've always gotten in. I've never had to wait. It's like the system here is beautiful. And I just had to share it with all of you, my friends, my students, my family. And as you well know, that I, anyone have anything else they need to say? No. no. Well, may <laughs> everything that has been reduced to noise in you become music again. And friendship and music and Eric Davenport chiropractor has no distance. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. I love you. We just oh I just can't thank you enough. I appreciate it. Oh my god. I